Hello, everybody. I'm excited about this. I know. Welcome to our spoiler review for Glass, which is in theaters now. I'm Dan Merle. I'm Ron Cornette. And as we said, this is our spoiler review. If you haven't seen the movie or you want to know what we think about the movie without hearing spoilers, mm. then go what, look at our regular review and come back. Let us know what you think. Yeah, because this is our blanket alert. This will be a full spoiler breakdown of Glass, a movie that, uh, full disclosure, we saw it. Uh, about a week and a half ago, yeah. mm -hmm. and so when we f when we put our review out, it was at the embargo. We didn't know what any other critics thought about the movie. We certainly didn't know what audiences thought about the movie. As we're sitting here taping today, we we don't know really what audiences think because mm -hmm. it's coming out anecdotally. A anecdotally, bit. I think uh, I, we we kind of guessed that it would be uh, a bit split. down the split down the middle, and it seems like that might be the case. Yeah. But critically. I was surprised. I thought that this would not be universally acclaimed, but I am frankly very surprised by the negativity from the critical community that this movie's gotten. Uh, and it's interesting because I have since spoken with a couple of critics, and I have I have a list right here, and and, mm -hmm. and we have similar but slightly different takes on this film. I yes. think that you're heavily in defense of it. Is that I am. correct? I, I am a I am a defender of glass. Mm -hmm. I understand. I think I, I like that you wrote down some issues because I, I do want to look at the issues yes. that people and and I would love to concede some of those potentially or or fight back against some of them. Uh, I, I am very much in defense of where this movie went. Mm -hmm. I think that since we're full support, I'm glad I don't have to be cagey about this. I love the direction that it took. I like the the end. So just I have I have a chart, Dan. Yes, I, I love have, it. I have as close to a chart as I do, which is a list of of problems slash is issues and what I believe works yeah. with the movie. But I will say heavily, heavily weighted on what I believe works is mm -hmm. the end of this film yes. is my favorite part of it. I love the end of this movie. Mm -hmm. I think this is exactly, I, I've, I've read a lot of reviews that uh, to the extent of it doesn't seem like M. Night Shyamalan knows what he's doing or knew what he was doing. Disagree. I disagree wholeheartedly with that. This feels like exactly the ending for this movie. I agree. And the one thing that I want to hit, I don't want to hit back, but but push back on first is I've seen a lot of people saying like, well, for a movie called Glass, this didn't have a lot of Mr. Glass in it. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a literal reading of the title, as in it's called Glass and there wasn't a lot of actual Mr. Glass. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think that Split, I will acknowledge, is a very sort of disassociated, disconnected middle chapter in the sense that it doesn't really tie into Unbreakable or until the Ironically very end. enough, since it's yeah. about DID. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, it's very uh, disassociated with the other, <laughs> with the first film, except for the very end, which it yeah. kind of has to be to pull off that surprise. Yeah. But I, I love how they put him into this film. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I think the name, I think calling this movie Glass is perfect because this is his end game and you don't even know that you're in it. Mm -hmm. until really the very, very end that this was his end game. And, yeah. and I think it connects perfectly with, with what his stated purpose was in Unbreakable, mm -hmm. which was, he says it at the end of David, it's like, if you exist, then that means that I'm here for a reason. Right. I have a reason to exist. I have a reason to be who I am. He wants a purpose. He wants a purpose. And this movie was about fulfilling that purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the disconnect is a lot of people thought that or assumed or in their own head had decided that his purpose was to be a supervillain. Sure, and and I don't think, and it's interesting because with Mr. Glass in particular, and look, I'll just state this for the record, Unbreakable is and remains my favorite M. Night movie. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when you think about that, his motivations, his emotional arc, he, he, he would have in a different life have wanted to be a hero desperately, mm -hmm. but it was because he didn't have that physical capability because he wasn't given those gifts yeah. that he thought I have no other choice but to be a villain. But because I am a villain, I give it, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. I give both birth to heroes yeah. because they have to rise to me. And as well, uh, I exist because you exist. So, right. so I think he sees himself as the as the bringer of heroes as much as much as villains. Right. And it's almost like the force must be balanced, you know, in right. Mr. Glass's mind. And so I think I think he really reveres the heroes. He doesn't hate them. He doesn't want to destroy them. He just wants a reason that he is here on Earth. That he is here, and that uh, I think, in a sense, that others like him are here. Yeah. And I like I. I I think I would have been probably pretty satisfied with an ending where he's Lex Luthor, and they go to this, they go to that building opening, and there's a big battle royale I between that it the Horde and and uh, David Dunn. And I, I like the fact wasn't. that it was revealed that that's not his plan. Yeah. 
his plan is not for him to win. And that's yeah. the other thing. I think people assume that like, well, that sucks. Like they all died. So he failed because his plan was, you know, like, well, why did they just kill everybody? Like, that's the point. No, the plan was to unleash the truth yes. into the world so that other heroes could rise and other villains could rise and the secret organization could no longer be so secret. Yes. Yeah. Unbreakable was a story about him finding his purpose. Mm -hmm. And Glass is the movie about him achieving his purpose. Now, if you thought his purpose was different than what the movie said it was, then you're going to go with it or you're not. And I understand that. But to, but to say, like, well, he didn't know what he was doing because... Mr. Glass wasn't a supervillain and they went a different way. Well, that doesn't mean M. Nashama doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. It just means he did something different than what you think he might have done or should have done. I love the fact that this was all building up to the fact that his purpose was, I am bringing this world of gods that I've been obsessed with that 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 saved my life. Into the open. Into the open. And that now, congrat like my purpose was to bring these heroes forth and now we live in a world of superheroes. Yeah, and the movie presupposes that they, the world has always been filled with heroes and villains that they've been hidden on purposely. And, and here's the other issue is that I think he is playing with the idea and was playing with the idea of who is really, as much as Glasses and, and Unbreakable was really mm -hmm. defined by hero and villain and fitting into those molds or not, or how you fit in or how you don't. Right. Um, Interestingly enough, I think he was trying to be less black and white about it here. Now, you can't call Mr. Gla Mr. Glass is a villain. He took this very nice gentleman mm -hmm. and slashed him in the throat. That's a bad guy. However, um, I do, I, and, it, and it is a self-motivated um, kind of journey that he's on. He wants to feel good about who he is in the world. So it's not like he's saying, the world needs heroes, the world needs icons, so I'm going to unleash them. No, I, I need to believe I matter. Right. However, I think they do, he does deal a little bit, interestingly enough, because he's a blunt instrument, which is one of my problems with the film. He is mm -hmm. not a subtle filmmaker. But yeah. interestingly enough, I think he is trying to deal with the shades of gray in there because He's also bringing heroes. You know, David's methods are against the laws. We've are in, in opposition to the laws. We we've always known, and um, you know, uh, as much as the Beast is 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 a killer and a serial killer and irredeemable in that respect, he sees himself as an avenging angel for those who have suffered. Yeah. And um and if you have suffered, he's your protector. That's how he sees himself. Right or wrong, crazy, crazy, but still. And then, and then you take this idea of a secret organization. Well, it's not Hydra and it's not Shield. It's both at once. Right. And you understand her perspective. She's saying, "I am going to go to any lengths that I can, humanely, to to, 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 to suppress this. To suppress this because it's just not good. We can't have that power imbalance." That's a fair point. That is yeah. a fair, it's the whole argument in the X-Men. The world is less safe yeah. with powerful people right. in it, paradoxically. Paradoxically. So it's a fair point. And she's saying, I'm going to go to every single length I can humanely. But mm -hmm. if I can't get there, I just have to protect the world first. Whether she's right, whether she's wrong, I get it. I like, and, and I mean, and I think, again, that's, that's what's one of the things that's so unconventional about these things is you have a story with heroes and villains where everyone, and I, I mean, and this is a comic book thing, but what I like is like everyone in this movie thinks they're the hero yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. Maybe Mr. Glass is the most selfishly motivated, but he also thinks that he's a hero in his he own right. He thinks he's a lead. He's a, he's a lead. He is a, he is a key figure. Yeah. I think that he is not... He obviously doesn't fear a world full of heroes, or else yeah. he wouldn't unleash it. He he's just sort of like my I my gift is to is to unleash this other gift. Yeah, on the world. And that's world. very human because we're all the protagonists in our own story. Yeah. We're all the hero in our own story in our own minds. We're all trying to have purpose, and it's when we don't feel that we do that people get depressed. Frankly, I mean, right. there are other reasons, obviously. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's it's the person who thinks he's the least heroic in the movie is. The hero, yeah, um, David Dunn, yeah, um, who's just sort of, you know, Bruce Wilson around. I like that they, they write that character very similar to Bruce Wilson's natural energy, which I think yeah. is why he plays that character pretty well. I, I think it is too. And it, so let's. Do you want to go to my chart? Let's go to the should, chart. Let's yes. go to the let's, chart. Let's throw a little structure okay. into this chaos. Um, no, I think that was good because the end is very much in my my underlined, underscored, it works for right. me. Yeah, that that for me is like the ending for me is, is my, my big keystone if, in, in discussing this film and defending it is I will have the discussion with you if you are of the opinion that you don't like the direction that it goes in yeah. or if you don't like where they took the story. Yeah. 
that's a great discussion. That's a debate. I can tell you what I think. You can tell me what you think. Where I'm going to push back are the people that said, like, well, it's a sign that that of a filmmaker who's lost, and which I've seen a lot of. A sign of a filmmaker who's lost and doesn't know what he's doing because I, I, I just think fundamentally the structure of the film, you can look at it and say, if anything, he knew he knew too much where he was going and yeah. he indulged too much in the direction of the film. It, was an, I, it wasn't too much indulgence for me. It was too much indulgence for some people. Yeah. But that's where I hit that. That's one criticism that I think is a little unfair. I agree, and I think we talked about this during our our spoiler free review. Where and I, I've had I had this discussion actually with a fellow critic the other day who hated the film, and I said he, I drew the same line. I said I couldn't disagree more that he did not know what he mm -hmm. was doing, and this isn't the film he wanted to make. I think you look at a film like. Um, the Predator, which I think I mm -hmm. used before. And I don't think it's that Shane Black doesn't know what he's doing, because he clearly does, given his other work. But I don't believe that is the film he wanted to make. No. I don't think that's the film he set out to make at all. No. And I think it's very clear in the construction of the film. This one, to me, look, whether you like it, whether you don't, it's the one M. Night wanted to do. And he was in control every single moment. And he had a vision every single moment. So let's talk yeah. about, to me, I agree. whether you like the vision or not. So the problems that I find, and, I, and, and speaking of the end, one of the big issues a lot of folks are having that I've heard from mm -hmm. is, you know, you followed this man, David, this hero for years, mm -hmm. and now he dies in a puddle. And isn't that a shame? No, it's awesome. It's freaking, and not that he died, because he's the hero and so forth like that. But what he's doing there, I think really well, is pointing out um, that ha the depth of that weakness, right? Mm -hmm. He's playing on that trope where it's not just water is his weakness, so he dies in a tidal wave. No, water is so very much his weakness that he yeah. literally dies in a puddle. In a puddle. And it's a weakness that is born of feeling, believing he was powerless. He had a moment where he believed he was powerless when he was a child. And that moment, this is very human, very human psychology. Yeah. Forever, that moment stayed embedded. And that circumstance is where he feels weak. Whether he is or he's not, he believes it strongly enough that he is. Well, yeah, and, and, and also the disappointment of just like, well, he's supposed to be the hero of the story and he dies in a puddle. Well, again, that's not the that's point. putting your supposition onto yeah. it of he's supposed to be the hero of the story. Like that. That's the, it's almost like the, that's the twist part yeah. uh, is that y you are conditioned to believe that yeah. he's supposed to be the hero of the story. And the reveal is that none of them, none of them yeah. are the heroes of the story. Exactly. None of them are. All of us All are. of them are the pawns and on the board to put this whole thing into action. Yeah. None of the, and that's another thing that I liked. And this is where subversion of audience expectations does work for me, me in the too. sense where you're telling a story, the expectation is that the story is going to be one thing, yeah, and it ends up that the story is something completely different. The whole time you've been watching the movie, mm -hmm. um, that's not what the movie, every time you think you understand what the movie is about, and, and here we'll address another issue that people have, because sure. I think it plays in. Um, like I said, M. Night is not a subtle filmmaker. He's he is a blunt instrument. He is very much. And yes. so when we look at things like the use of exposition and particularly the use of talking about comic book tropes yes. overtly in the exposition, yes. um, that is an issue that while I was watching the film, I was uncomfortable with because it felt mm -hmm. very, very on the nose. However, one other side to that coin is what I like about it is I think he was doing a little uh, sleight of hand, yes. he was making you pay it so much attention here that he he was actually telling a very different story. He was telling you that this is the story that's being told, but it wasn't the story that was being no. told. And I almost think um, his lack of subtlety supported his endeavor because it was so on the nose um, that it worked, that it actually wasn't that thing. Does that, does I, no, that it does. make sense? And, and I'm, I agree with you 100%. Like, that's another criticism that I read, and a lot of negative reviews, people yeah. just blasting it, just like, this movie thinks it's so smart. We get it. It's a comic book movie. Why does it have to, why does it have to directly uh, reference the fact that it's a comic book movie? It thinks it's so clever. Yeah. It's like, again, to my reading of the film, that's giving a movie that's that's assigning fault to uh something that the film is very very aware that it's doing self-aware yeah. that it's doing and i don't think it was there to seem clever i think m night would be 
it'd be pretty arrogant for him to think that he could be origin like meta in a, in a in a in an era of Deadpool, right? Uh, where people would be like, "Oh wow, nobody's ever referenced that." I agree. I think that there could maybe was there a, was there too much of it by a quarter or a third? I, I'll grant you that. Like they, as you said, he's not subtle. He went a little over the top on. Yeah. It. At the same time, it's the setup. It's setup and payoff. I think he keeps referencing that because he's saying like this is a classic superhero mm-hmm. villain origin story. This is a, they're going to get revealed. This is how this happens. And and again, it's it's setting up expectation, and then subverting it. Yeah. Uh, and why does it work here when it hasn't worked in some other films that I've had trouble with subverting audience expectation? Yeah. It's because it didn't seem casual. Yeah. It didn't seem uh, for its own sake. not thought out. Yeah. It seemed very direct. It yeah. seemed very thought out. It seemed very explicitly meant to. To, to 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 make the story ultimately have a bigger impact, yeah. Um, and then it just comes down to taste and preference. Do you like do you like movies that do that, or do you not like movies that do that? Right. But to say that it was foolhardy yeah. or that it did it in a in a, in a non thought out way, mm-hmm. again, my reading of the film doesn't support that. I think it's the exact opposite. So I will say to to that point, two things. One, um, for me, it did take it a little too far um, because because then it started to telegraph that fact. That it was taking it too far. Does that make sense? No, it, it, got, it was a little too. Cute. Yeah. It, yeah. It, and a few other things were telegraphed. You know, there's a very, very, there's a lingering shot on a gentleman putting in cameras outside of the building, which I thought telegraphed. I turned to my boyfriend at the time. I'm still my boyfriend now, uh, <laughs> but in that moment, and I said, "Oh, look, it's Chekhov's camera, right. and it's definitely coming back." You know, because it just would made such a point of showing us that camera and Chekhov's and, coding and Chekhov's coding. Uh, and I it, think it's a credit it, that I was so swept it, up in what was happening, yeah. even though he had explicitly shown me that I yeah. had forgotten in yeah, the yeah. moment that they had shown me that until it goes back, and yeah. I go, "Oh, yeah, I should have." Yeah, I yeah. should have seen that. I mean, so to me, there were a few things that were pretty telegraphed and very overt, but largely um, in, in terms of subversion. For me, when I don't like subversion of tropes is when it feels like the filmmaker's in an argument with the movie he's in or yes. with the franchise he's or she or they are in, um, in the world they're in, where mm-hmm. they're, they're subverting a world they didn't create. But this is his world. Yeah. He's creating this comic book reality. And if he wants to subvert it, that's up to him. You know, and I will also say this, you know, uh, the gentleman I was talking to the other day said, oh, wow, you really think you can surprise us with a secret organization in a world in which we just saw civil war and all these other things in the MCU. Mm -hmm. And I and I was thinking in my head, yeah, that's one of the challenges of Glass right now, sort of like Incredibles 2 when it came out. When it came out, comic book movies were not what they are now. Mm-hmm. And so there's so much to have informed the genre since then. So it's like, oh, wow, you really think that you can do anything that hasn't been done. And I actually think he's aware to some degree of that. And I actually think he's not trying to su- surprise you at all with the idea that there's a secret organization. I think the surprise is, is that they make sense. That that they're not secret and evil for the sake of being evil. That they're not trying to heist or steal or gain power. They're trying to protect humanity. Oh, and not just the nature of it, but again, it's like, oh, great, another secret organization. I mean, you how, knew she how, was how, in a secret organization. Just, she, something was up with her. She yeah. wasn't just a doctor. You know, you knew that. Uh, but but the, but I agree. I've heard this like, oh, great, yeah. How original, another secret yeah. organization. Like again, when you look into what I think is the really layered meta narrative of this story. Um, that's not meant to be the twist, just like the Kevin's father. Like, yeah. and these are the things that, as I'm watching That's the movie, was I was throwaway. hoping that they weren't yeah. the twist because I'm like, yeah, Kevin's dad being on the train. That I, I know that. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I hope that's not the, t- and it wasn't the, t- the twist. It was, you know, and then the secret organization. I was there going like, okay, well, I guess that's, a, I guess that's kind of cool, the secret organization. But again, that's not. The twist, and I love that he was really kind of playing games with his own his own filmography yeah. and his own meta narrative. Just like this is the no, this isn't the twist. This is the twist. No, this is not the twist either. But also the idea of a the secret, whole movie is the twist. Yeah, the whole movie is the twist, and the idea of a secret organization not being original. I think again underscores the fact with with Mr. Glass. It's called Glass. It is about yeah. his plan. Yes, of course that's a trope. Again, he is a expert on these things. The shadowy secret organization being behind it all is obviously something that he foresaw or thought was happening or might happen because he set up this whole end game just in case something like what happened yeah. actually did happen. So 
again, these are criticisms that, you know, I hear, like, you know, if you want to throw criticisms uh, about a film, I, I love debating them, but, but what kind of annoys me sometimes is when you throw a criticism at a movie seemingly choosing to ignore or at least downplaying yeah. contextualization in the film that you should at least give the filmmaker credit for. Yeah. Even if you don't agree with it, maybe at least give him the credit that he might have been thinking a, a certain way and then again it comes down to do you agree with it or not but yeah. that's where that's where i will defend a movie is uh you know i, I intent and effect i will debate but when you ignore certain things yeah. or i think misinterpret or willfully sometimes and i'm not saying that all criticism of this movie is willfully misinterpreting yeah, things yeah, yeah. or that you even should like it i just think it should be on a level playing field yeah. is what i'm saying i agree so so let's talk about the idea of the twist yes. okay so one criticism another criticism that i I kind of agree with is that claim that this was always meant to be the sequel to Unbreakable. I simply don't believe that. I, I really don't because I think if we had looked, what are we now? Not how many years are we since Dan? Unbreakable? Is nineteen. It, nineteen believe years. Believe it or not. So if we were looking at a sequel sequel to Unbreakable eighteen years ago, mm -hmm. it would have been very different. Fifteen different, ten different, five different. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I believe that Split is a movie that had it not succeeded the way it did with critics and at the box office, we would have just had a fun tag that it was in the unbreakable world and wouldn't have had this movie. That said, I don't also care that it wasn't the long gestating 19 years in the making sequel to Unbreakable because I think what it's doing in a meta clever way is not only in world, um, sort of breaking those mm -hmm. those expectations, but Outworld too. He's you're living in a world, and he's probably aware. I would hope and imagine and believe he was aware of superhero movies, which set up future superhero movies in a yeah. very overt way, right? And so you say, "Oh man, we've got glass." We've got a villain, mm -hmm. we've got the beast, it's James McAvoy in this crazy performance. Bruce is back, you know, Mr. Glad, like this is it. This is setting up this whole other world. Yeah. And that is what a studio would want in a comic book movie yes, and expect. Is. That is what would happen in a comic book movie and we would expect it. And all of the things, whether it was because of limitations of budget that he couldn't do a big epic showdown in a, in a tower, I'm glad that he had those limitations because he threw that all and drowned it in a puddle. And he <laughs> said, that's maybe not the way it has to work. Right. And that's maybe not the way life would work. Yeah. And um, that's maybe not a way a super, a really interesting, compelling, different, how do I tell a different ser superhero story in the world of superhero genres dominating? That's how. Yeah. The secret organization is not evil. They just have a belief that you don't. Or maybe you do, because by the way, I kind of get it, you know. And um, two is we are not setting up the 15 different sequels and spinoffs with these characters because they're dead now. Right. And it's not these individual heroes that work, but or that are the primary and most important. It's all of the ones that we don't even know about. Right. And now your imagination is the sequel. And now you live in the. Now you live in a world, the world that you see in Marvel movies and DC movies. Exactly. Now you live in a world where there are superheroes everywhere. In a yeah. weird way, this could be a prequel to every mainstream and, superhero but, movie but ever made. But that's true. But that's true because now they're everywhere. Yeah. Right? Now they're everywhere. And and so to me, um, I, 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 I'm hearing some people say he doesn't seem to be aware of that. And I'm like, how could he not? He's smashing it in its head. Yeah. No, that he's, <laughs> he's completely, I think he's completely yeah. aware of it. I, I mean, I think that this is... You know, I can't get into M. Night Shyamalan's head, and I don't know if I would want to because I think there's some crazy stuff bouncing around in there. Sure. Um, and also some brilliant stuff, but also some weird stuff, much like his movies. Um, I I suspect that this was always the direction the story yeah. was going to take in his mind. But, you know, do I think that he wrote Unbreakable knowing that he was going to make Split, which would then be a breakout box yeah, office success? Come on. No, no, I think you that didn't. he I think he I think he made Unbreakable and it did pretty well and it was yeah. very was well regarded. I think he had a great idea for Split and rolled the dice with a tag to see if he could generate enough uh, capital to to invest small a 20 million dollar budget is very smart for this movie. Very smart. Um, and I think part of why it is at the scale it is. You yeah. can't afford a big tower battle. And, and that maybe that's why it is so, so small. But I think that he rolled the dice on Split and said, let's see if maybe I can get this glass story tied yeah. up. But I think that... I suspect this is always the direction he wanted to go, but was this a meticulous roadmap yeah. that he had constructed for 19 years? 
I don't Clear, think so. Clearly I, I think it's pretty not. clearly not. Clearly not. But uh, the budget, I agree with you, it's a smart budget. And and sometimes, what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is the right. mother of invention. Um, so, so a lot of people are saying, oh, it's just Bruce Willis and Sam Jackson were either less available. And that's why it's really McAvoy who's dominant in the film in terms of being present. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'll say. When they are there, they're showing up for work. And... Um, I think the acting in this movie is is certainly in the it works for me. I think the visuals of the film tie in very beautifully. I think it's very visually well constructed. I do think that because the script needed to be ready relatively short time after Split, mm-hmm. um, some of the things that we're talking about could have been a little more elegantly done, um, a little less on the nose and a little less overt if he had had some more time with the script. But that's just also not who he is. Right. You know, it, like it, in any of his movies, he's just not a snuggle guy. So I really don't even know if then it could have gotten there. Um, but so then you look at character arc. There's really no, you know, I think moments like this, believe, 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 were a little overplayed, you know? Yeah. Um, but there's, it's an, the world is in a character arc, which is the interesting thing. No individual character is actually having much of an arc, which I can see leaving an audience a little unsatisfied because he's almost giving your expectations as the viewer an arc, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Which is kind of an interesting way to tell a story, but I can see where it's leaving some people unsatisfied because they're used to taking that, taking that journey with a protagonist and that doesn't really happen here. Yeah. It's uh, Thanos is the the protagonist. Thanos is the real protagonist. (laughs) Yeah. No, uh, uh, first of all, the people that think that Bruce Willis's availability was, have you you seen his filmography for the last five years? He's eminently available. He he will literally, Um, he'll come tie your shoes on a camera if you give him a watch. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, To think that James McAvoy would be more available than Bruce Willis is... Like, can we talk about uh, McAvoy getting ignored again? Yeah, he was great in this movie. Yeah. I mean, it's not his his movie, so he'll get ignored even more than he did in Split, yeah. which is really 100% yeah. his movie. He's so good. He's so good in this movie. Yeah. He's so good in this role. He'll never get real awards recognition for it. But I think part of the reason that he's in it so much is, you know, you play the you play your winning hand. I mean, I think yeah, yeah. Split was one of his biggest hits box office wise. It was yeah. it came out 16 years earlier or 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 yeah, 16 years later than the first one did. So more people know that character. Um, and you know, but but I will say that like that's one of the things that I, you know I'll grant you. There are some pacing issues, particularly in the second act. Yeah, yeah. For me, I think that it was a bit. I, I started wandering a little bit in the middle there, like okay, where where are we going with this? As the character balance. I, I'm actually happy with what they showed of, of Mr. Glass. I think it was a build up to again a finale that that shows that this was all part of a very meticulous plan. Um, do I wish David Dunn could have had maybe one more major story beat? Sure. Yeah, uh, I, I, that's something that if I could wave my magic wand and come up with something that made sense, that's something I would have liked to have seen. It's not a perfect film by any means. But uh, again, I think when you're talking about character arcs and this character didn't have an arc, that character didn't have an arc, that's again operating under the assumption that this is the story of those characters Which when, it's not. when it's revealed that it's really, really not. Yeah. It's more the story of this, the, the support the world. characters yeah. around them yeah. uh, as much as it is them. Um, I think it's the story of the world they find themselves in. Right. It's you it's, know? it's it's a very odd movie. Yeah. Um, and as with most odd movies, it's going to be off putting to some people, which yeah. which which happens. Yeah. Um, but I I just hate to see a movie being punished for its oddness alone, uh, rather than did I agree with that oddness? Was this the kind of oddness that I wanted? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I don't think you can objectively attack a film for not being exactly the kind of thing that you wanted. You can just say, hey, it wasn't for me. Uh, wh- one thing a friend of mine did say was that the way that they talked about comic book movie tropes was very broad and uh, yeah. sort of like, you know, as if someone had wikied what these things are. Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe, but I, I do believe he was utilizing it in a way that, that, in my in my belief, in my mm-hmm. read of the film, he's utilizing it to distract you, right? Um, um, to and make, not subtly, and not subtly, because he's he's again he's almost playing with his own the expectations of what M Night does by presenting a film that in and of itself is the twist. Yeah, it, this isn't going where you thought it was going to go. The whole movie is the twist ending to what you thought Unbreakable was going to be. Yeah. Um, 
and split would add up to. So I, I think that's pretty interesting. I do believe it's intended. That's kind of what I, I want from a filmmaker is whether I like it or I don't at the baseline, did they set out with a clear intent? Did mm -hmm. they know what they wanted? Did they get what they wanted? Right. And then do I like it or not is another question. Um, but but those are two very different questions. Yeah. Because um, one is where I feel like you're really critiquing the structure of the film and saying, um, I, I don't believe they did get what they wanted or that they had a clear vision. And I think there's some movies that very clearly demonstrate that. Yeah. I don't think this is one of them. I think that if there were no split in the middle of these two, then the direction that Glass took wouldn't be that much of a surprise. Um, I think the split is the disconnected middle chapter to this trilogy, and I think what it might have set up an expectation, and certainly this is the marketing and stuff, because of the pieces that this movie has to play with, has set this up as a, for lack of a better word, more traditional superhero versus supervillain clash, mm -hmm. and that's certainly what you've grown to expect, and I, I, think, I think that maybe the expectation that this would be more of a tidy mainstream look or more of a traditional approach was supported by the fact that Split was more of a mainstream film mm. than Unbreakable was. Split was very sort of, you know, it was quirky, certainly, particularly with McAvoy's performance, but it was a fairly straightforward, you know, sort of super villain split identity type story. Yeah. It didn't have a lot of narrative tricks mm -hmm. as far as this is not the kind of story that you think it is. Except it's actually this the, kind of story. Except that the beast was real. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is the setup to, you know, is yeah. the beast a real thing? But even then, that's not out of the realm of the story that it was telling. Yeah. And then it threw this unbreakable thing at the end. Yeah. You're like, whoa, what? Yeah. Uh, but if you if you lop off the unbreakable part at the end, you know, split is a, is a pretty tidy tale of a guy with split personalities. And is he supernatural or is he not? He is. Yeah. The end. I think without that in the middle, and if it's just unbreakable and glass, then people might not be as sort of surprised or off-put or mm -hmm. unhappy or dissatisfied with the direction that M. Light chose to take it because right. it would be a expected of a film that did the exact, the breakable did the exact same thing. Right. You thought it was one kind of a of film, and at and the end it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, so that's where I think as far as the trilogy may feel a little untidy is the, the tonally unbreakable and glass are like, on the same frequency and split is this kind of weird little thing in the middle that's yeah. that just sort of disrupts the two of them um uh, so yeah i just want to make it clear like I, i'm not saying that people that didn't like this movie are wrong no just that uh i liked it yeah. and and i and i and i and i hate to see disagreements about storytelling kind of chalked up as objective flaws in the film that's yeah, really what i'm saying yeah and and i you know I could understand if someone's read is that that's a flaw and I don't believe you guys that it was yeah. intended. I think it's just a flaw. That's fine. I think one of the other things that I like about it, again, it's not super subtle, but um, all three of these films are just kind of like a big psychological metaphor, you know, mm -hmm. where you, everyone wants to believe and, and the world is designed to set it up. Everything has a reason. Your pain has purpose. Like you live in a world that's telling you that's true, whether it's not, because it's just much harder to hear. No, it's just random and it sucks mm -hmm. and there is no purpose to it. <laughs> you know, like that's a much darker message yeah. um, than everything has a reason and your pain has a purpose. It's making you strong or it's making you better, whatever it's making you more compassionate, who knows, um, that we tell ourselves to justify why we have to suffer. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that I think is really resonant just on a human level. And then I think the other one is this idea that and you can even, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, even just in your day-to-day -day life where you're fine, you're feeling good, you feel, you feel sort of safe and confident in the world, and then someone hits on something that reminds you of something that happened way in your past, a mm -hmm. moment, and suddenly you're weakened, right? Mm -hmm. This is just made manifest physically for these guys. It's all things that are relatable to any human being, maybe not dissociative identity disorder, that's rare. Um, but the concept of being at war with yourself yes. to a certain extent, of, of being... Um, looking for your identity of, 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 of fearing your work that your worst instincts will take over. Yes. Of, of having a personality that isn't, that is uh, discordant, that you can be a caretaker and a monster yep. and that, that there are parts of yourself that you'll never fully be comfortable with. I think, yeah. you know, I again, think that's it's very much human. more literal yeah. in split than maybe, but again, 
not a subtle filmmaker. Yeah, not a subtle <laughs> filmmaker. And he's not trying to make a subtle point because those you're absolutely right. We all have those warring elements to ourselves. Yeah. The part that has a temp me, right? like you have a temper, but you want to be kind, you know, yeah. and like sometimes those two when you're in the car and you someone cuts you off in track it, traffic, those two parts are not agreement no. <laughs> in that moment. One wants to take over. Um, so, yeah, of course, it's very overt here. And I think it's also pushing, say, how far would it have to go until physically mm -hmm. you changed you changed yeah yeah i think it's very appropriate for a trilogy now that started with a train derailment yes. as its inciting incident that the end is going to be uh, the audience <laughs> on a train that you will either ride to the end of the tra yeah. track or that at some point is going to jump the rails for you um i took the train all the way to the station i get i get other people that hopped off yeah. um i under i understand that um, and really more than anything, this is the kind of movie that I find invigorating and refreshing because, uh, I love discuss, I love discussions about film. And yeah. this is a, this is a movie with a lot of uh, pros and cons, a lot of, uh, areas to discuss and debate and dissect and talk about intention and talk about, uh, structure, plot structure, character structure, character arc, story. I love doing that, and yeah. I love filmmakers that make films like this. And for a filmmaker like M. Night Shyamalan, who has been through it all, and sometimes he's made movies that have gone completely off the rails for reasons that don't have to do with any of the things that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, it was it was kind of um, satisfying for me to get to the end of this journey with him and and still be on board. I, I like that from a personal level because I was a fan of Unbreakable when it yeah. came out, and, and I and I like Split, and I like being able to sort of take the train to the end of the line, even if not everybody's still on the train that I got on with. I think the inter the final meta thing about this is M Night himself, which is if he think about the ups and downs he's had, he's been deemed. What, what did they put him on Time Magazine and say? I believe it was Newsweek, and it said the next Spielberg. The next Spielberg. So he has been deemed basically a god among fil filmmakers in one moment, reviled as a villain um, to anything cinematic in the next. He's played both those roles, and maybe what he's trying to say with this movie, to some degree, is like I'm just human, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm neither of those things, and I'm also both of those things, and so are you, or and so are we all. I am a god, and or I have I unleashed a, greatness upon the world, I, and I believe both of them. <laughs> I believe both of those things about him, right? Like, I believe that humility is in there, but he has shown a lot of arrogance over the years and literally believe. cast himself in a, a deific uh, position previously, if we'll, we'll recall from Lady yeah. in the Water. I believe either take. I would believe, <laughs> I would either, believe take. either take. <laughs> and that's kind of what makes this interesting, because yeah. to your point, as we talk through it, it's like, I do see the criticisms. I understand why they're there. I don't think they come out of nowhere. But I land on, I, I think that what was done here is interesting enough and mm -hmm. very much in line with what he wanted. I appreciate it. I'm going to see it again. I might appreciate it that much more. I might fall the other way. Um, I don't know. But I love Unbreakable. Mm -hmm. And so for me to appreciate what he did here as much as I do, I think is a testament to that because I really love that film a lot, you yeah. know, um, and I, I still do. I'll defend that film all day long. So that's that's, that's it. That's, that's pretty glass. much it. That's our thoughts yeah. on glass. What did you think? Are you still processing it? Were you on board? Did you jump off the train? Let us know in the comments below and have a discussion, a discussion yeah. amongst yourselves. Uh, trade notes, trade theories, trade trade complaint, whatever you want to do. Nicely. This is what it, nicely. Uh, this is what it's about. It's, <laughs> it's not just about watching movies. It's about talking them, dissecting them, yeah. learning from them, what to do, what not to do, what you like, what you didn't like. This is one of those I think you can do that with pretty easily. Let's let's let our inner hero out in comments. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let yeah. your inner hero out and dissect glass. Glass. Roth, it's, it's been, been fun. A, it's been a fun start to the year. I'm yeah. glad we get a thinker right off the bat. Yeah. Um, we got a, we got so many more. It's coming, coming up next. We got thinkers and stinkers and everything in between. Well, it's January. It is January. Mm. There's some, maybe some good ones. I hope there's some more good ones. A couple of good ones. Thanks for watching. <laughs>